me. And so when I started the process of coming to Pacifica, I started having what Jung called big dreams. These huge archetypal dreams that I had no idea what they meant, um, but I knew that they were significant. And um, they just kept coming and coming and coming. And I had had a lull where I was, my creative libido had really been languishing for a couple of years. And I, you know, it, it had been so taxed from commercial art that I didn't feel passion for it. And then all of a sudden when I decide to give up art and I'm going to go into therapy, you know, become a therapist, I'm like, all these big dreams are coming and I'm totally compelled to paint these dreams, right? So, so my creative life just flourished. Um, and I would, I would write down the dream in the morning. But as I said about language before, it just did not have that juiciness. I think dreams are like art, where it's this onion skin spiral where we go inside the dream, right? And it's multi-layered. It's not a linear process of, okay, and the dream started out like this, and then I went here, and then this, this, and this happened. It's like, when I wrote it, it didn't have that, uh, that, that nostalgic, juicy feeling that dreams have. And so then I would have to paint them. Right, because that was the closest thing I could represent. Susan talked about you know artists are rep, you know trying to represent nature, and, that, and and I was trying to represent the dream. How can I pull this dream into something that can be witnessed? You know, for me to remember. And so I started creating these these images, and I would take the most pivotal part of the dream and paint that, and then I would kind of layer in all the sequence of what had happened throughout the dream, almost like a holograph or a collage where it was all happening at once in the painting, but it represented for me my own um, dream. And I had no idea.